absolutely. It's, it's definitely a teeter-totter out there. So, I mean, if you're – you're going to go in hard. Um, you got to know where that line is, and uh, it's going to get built up. But uh, you'll see uh, quite a few cars. I'm sure uh, Nipper will not be the last one to, to end up on their turn two, turn around. All right, so we're letting these guys, uh, Jordy's turn back around. They're letting these guys just kind of take a look at everything. As many of these drivers never been here before, Trey Mills never been here before. Uh, I'm not sure. I think Jake Rainey's run a crate race here. Joseph Brown, he's your track record holder. But a lot of these guys in the field tonight, uh, have never seen this place and the laps they got last night in practice if they chose to unload or they chose to come up for practice were, are the only laps they've ever gotten around here so we will see uh, how it shakes out you can expect some of these guys to to take to this racetrack pretty quickly some of these guys will leave here going whoo glad, glad we're done and over with it's just the nature of a, of a racetrack that, that people have never seen before so Harrington's in the 19 keep your eyes on him Joseph Brown out of the time lapse I think we only got about a lap and a half or so of time lapse but uh, Joseph Brown so far the quickest driver on the racetrack but everybody's just showing one lap of time so we'll have to see how it unfolds here as they should be just about ready and being the track record holder he knows how to make a few laps around here at a 27 of Joseph Brown yeah, so Joseph, uh, Joseph Brown in the 27 car, showing the track record holder. He's the National 100-604 champion at the East Alabama Motor Speedway back in 2022. He's got a multi-time uh, history of winning that race and also of uh, big wins at East Alabama. He's in the Larry Harrod trucking, uh, 27. Harrod, Larry Harrod logging company, rather, 27 car. So Joseph, uh, super late models, debut here this year he ran with us at all tech uh, didn't have the best run that he was uh, expecting so he's back with the series here at Cochrane. boy these guys are just hard on the oh. outside oh there goes harrington off the racetrack he'll keep the keep the throttle lit and down the back straight away he rejoins so how about we talk about guys that have never been here before harrington does not check that box and he went up and over the berm in turn one and two there's pearson lee williams on your screen in front of you as white flag comes down over this first hot lap session with turn one and two, just tricky for a lot of these guys. As Garrett oh. Smith, oh, Joseph Brown up and over, we'll stay stay with it. As checkered flag starting to come down on this field. There's Garrett Smith and Will Harrington on your screen. Smith has the fastest lap in this hot lap session. Again, very, very early. As Harrington comes across and completes his run, as does Garrett Smith. So Garrett Smith, Joseph Brown, Pearson Lee Williams, unofficially your top three out of that group as they'll exit off. Boy, turn one and two, just treacherous, Trey. We were watching that uh, two, three, four cars went up and over, uh, but uh, everybody able to kind of keep in the throttle and rejoin the, the racetrack on the back straightaway. Jordy Nipper, the only one that actually spun it. Yeah, absolutely. Better, no time better than to uh, test it during the hot lap <laughs> session, right. rather yeah. there than the heat race, but... Uh, how about that Longhorn by Garrett Smith yeah. putting up the fast time so far? Yeah, Randall Edwards to crew chief on the 10 car. Of Garrett Smith turning the wrenches. So uh, not a more veteran uh, veteran cr uh, crew chief in the pit area, I believe, tonight here at Cochran than Randall. So Garrett's going to be one of those drivers that you need to watch out for uh, as he is definitely going to be a top contender. Coming on the racetrack there, there's Peyton Freeman in the F1 car out of Commerce, Georgia. Good to have Peyton there here at Cochran again. Some ups and downs throughout the year. Hopefully tonight goes better for the young driver, the 2021 Southern All-Star Series champion. Hayden Cowan in the 14, right behind him, the supply chain management. Edwards Interior Graphics 14 car out of Rincon, Georgia. Part of the Cowan Brothers Racing. He's in the Longhorn. I believe Gavin's in the Rocket. Chris Jones is 46. That is Alabaster, Alabama native Chris Jones in the 46 coming off of turn two. Dalton Cook out of Columbus, Georgia in the 44D. Comes in 13th in points. He really looking for a good, good run on his anniversary is Dalton. Ashton Winger in the 12. Gavin Cowan in the 19 car. J.R. Mosley in the 99. That is the second group here of the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series Dirt Draft Hot Laps. Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series presented by Sweet Victory Apparel Company. These guys getting a look at it. There's the anniversary driver, the 44D of Dalton Cook. Again, last driver here. Came in right at the start of driver's meeting. 
and uh, said this time he's got a good excuse as he and the wife were spending their anniversary weekend in Panama City, Florida. So they cut the anniversary short to come up to Cochran Motor Speedway and run, looking for a good points night here. As we look here, this uh, grandstand's filling up as the green flag flies on the second group of Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series. So Garrett Smith was the fastest driver from group one. Group two starting to take their time laps here. In their hot lap session. Hayden Cowan, how about that? Oh, Gavin goes around at the top of two and brings out the yellow flag just as soon as brother Hayden went to the top of the charts. Hayden Cowan with an impressive lap of a 14-1-6-2. Joseph Brown's track record, we've talked all about the track record, but I don't think we've mentioned a 14-0-6-0. Again, has to be set in qualifying for it to be official, but uh, Gavin, uh, rather Hayden Cowan in the 14 car with a really strong lap here. But, uh, that young man, I watched him uh, run uh, a lot of 602 and 604 stuff in this area at Screven, Swainsboro here. Uh, that young man is uh, definitely an impressive talent behind the wheel, and they've got that super late model motor underneath that car, so he's going to be one to watch there in the 14. Green flag comes back out on this group. Can everybody navigate the treacherous turn one and two? There you see Hayden kind of off the racetrack just a teeny bit, but he kept it in the throttle. And the last lap of this hot lap session there, Gavin, Again with problems, J.R. Mosley up and over in turn two, around I should say, not over. He's over the berm, but up on stays on all fours. And the 99 car, the Fox Shocks 99, J.R. Mosley entry. Just uh, yet another driver to just find a lot of issues there in turn one and two. The Columbus, Georgia native making his second appearance with the, with the tour this year. We saw him earlier at Magnolia. as they went ahead and threw the checkered flag there on that group, as they were, many of them were coming to take the checkered anyway. So unofficial or officially here in Hot Labs, Hayden Cowan, top of the charts. He's the fastest out of group two and the fastest overall. Garrett Smith's group, first group, first lap was an impressive lap for Garrett as he was the fastest in that group. So this guy's getting a look at it. I'm, I'm interested uh, and I'll rely on, on you, Trey, for this. Uh, do, are we going to see the, the problems in turn one and two all night, or does that kind of fade away once we start heat race action? No, it's, it's typically an all-night thing. Um, that people try to get the most out of the track, and um, it, it can bite you real quick. So um, you got to be careful out there know where it's at. But, um, yeah, every, every once in a while you'll see it in a heat race feature, and they'll just hop over the berm trying to, trying to be the fastest car out there. It's kind of one of those things. I'm sure it's no harm, no foul, as long as they go over and then try to merge on middle of the back straightaway. But if someone goes over kind of toward the middle and comes back down, uh, it, what looks to be, to me, the preferred racing line at the, at the exit of turn two being the high side there, I can imagine that could cause quite a melee. Absolutely, yeah. If you can get it under control and, and keep, it, keep it through the back stretch, it typically uh, will, will stay green. But, uh, yeah, when you... When you flip around back up there, they uh, typically brings out the caution. Yeah, I, I rode back through there earlier today on a golf cart, just kind of getting a layout of everything, and it's actually pretty level. There's a there's a lane and a half uh, of level ground there to off the off the back straightaway where guys could theoretically stay in the throttle and then keep it you know keep it uh, under green condition and come back on the racetrack. As our next group is coming on the racetrack, that is not uh, one of our super late model competitors there in the big truck running down the front straightaway, but there are some of our super late models on the back straightaway, and the first car in this group will be one of the Florida drivers who took practice last night for his first laps ever around the Cochrane Motor Speedway. He comes in 10th in series point standings. Tonight, it's Milton, Florida's Bo Slay. That is Bo Slay. In car number two, it's a J. Dickens powered Longhorn sponsored by three trade consultants, Jason McCullers Properties and Randy Polk Holmes, the two car of Bo Slay. I talked to Bo earlier about uh, 
him being able to to kind of travel. He said, you know, he said, we've raced around home for so many years. This is our real first year of traveling. And he said, I wish we'd have done it sooner. He said, because we've got a lot of bad habits and a lot of bad adjustments that we found out we can't really make on the road. So they're definitely having to learn. And, uh, and the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series is the place for them this season. And they're going to follow the tour all throughout the year. He said, we're sticking with it the entire duration, regardless, unless something catastrophic happens. But uh, good to have both sway here in the two car. Out of North Augusta, South Carolina, they call him the White Knight in the Augusta Aquatics, m w Transport, Max's Kart Racing 42. It's Clay Knight, Clay Knight in the 42. Good to see Clay Knight on all, all fours after a, a, a barrel roll at Cherokee Motor Speedway last Thursday night in another regional series. Uh, Clay, uh, he was telling me all about, the, I guess, what will be a forgettable but unforgettable night at Cherokee a few or last week on Thursday night, so good to have Clay. The 79 car, that is Navarre, Florida's Kyle Bryant. Kyle Bryant, the Bryant Racing Equi Equipment Longhorn Chassis. That's a Longhorn, a Blue Horn, that they purchased from Mike Marler not too long ago in the 79 of Kyle Bryant, who's a uh, known asphalt racer. Uh, parents own, I believe, the Five Flag Speedway down in Pensacola. Kyle Bryant in 79. Right behind Kyle and now kind of going underneath of Kyle is the other driver tied with Will Harrington. At the top of the charts in the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series Tour this year, the Langenfelder Mechanical Base Race Fuels 10 car. It's Milton, Florida's Joseph Joyner. Joseph Joyner, the Hunt the Front car in car number 10. Middle of the back straightaway is the two car, the 2X Motorsports entry out of North Augusta, South Carolina, John Henderson. John Henderson's 2X comes in sixth in series points. And right behind him is the three-time Dixie Speedway track champion, Jason Croft out of Woodstock, Georgia. The Croft Heating and Air nine car jason croft and the last car of this group in car number 18 x out of douglasville georgia michael page michael page in the 18 x in the bear transport bear trailer sales 18 x car green flag is out on this third group of hunt the front super dirt series super late models and dirt draft hot laps joiner there in car number 10 has uh, been impressive every race we've run this season. His worst finish of the year came in a race that he led six laps of, or rather not six laps, he led 22 laps at Alltech. It's uh, Joseph Joyner who finished 11th after fading late in the race. Joyner then went on to finish second at Magnolia and finished third at Swainsboro and has found himself tied with Harrington. Bo Slay. In the two car there on your screen. He's in a little lower line than some of the other drivers in turn one and two. Play night on your screen in 42. Joyner has turned the fastest lap of hot laps as the checkered flag begins to fly here on the third group. You're looking at Clay Knights, 42. There's John Henderson in the 2X. See if we can get a look at that filler panel there. You see the hashtag Mad Strong for Madeline Willingham out of Jackson, South Carolina. Again, talked about the tragedy that struck that family. Uh, it's John Henderson. It's uh, basically John's uh, John's kid's stepsister, Madeline Willingham. Uh, he passed away 10 years old last weekend, and you see the hashtag. He removed the H&A development logo, which is John's company, off the front of that car and put the Mad Strong. So uh, just uh, be thinking about that family if, you, if uh, in your thoughts and prayers as they've had a rough couple of weeks here. Um, Good to have John with us this weekend. They could use a good run. The whole family, all the friends, they could definitely use a good run. And hopefully they have that here at Cochran to kind of help uh, help the healing process of the tragedy that they've gone through in the last week or so. So fourth and final group, I believe, or was that everybody? Let's see here. Should have one more group of super late models. So the staging lane here at Cochran is... Uh, outside for the outside pit area is at well outside of turn number three uh, it's actually uh takes them quite a bit of time to get from the staging lanes to the racetrack is what ha what they have to do it's a kind of a one-way pit area out there they have to let everybody that's exiting clear and then they can bring the staging group on and you see the four wheelers and atvs and golf carts that are making their way to the infield are starting to come across now so the super late model competitors that are in the last group should be Coming to the racetrack here shortly, we'll revisit the time trials thus far, or timing thus far shows Joseph Joyner out of the third group. He was fast 
at a 14-1-1-2, fastest overall. Hayden Cowan from the second group, second quick overall. John Henderson out of the third group, the 2X car, is uh, third fastest overall. Good run for Kyle Bryant, fourth fastest. Garrett Smith from the first group is fifth fastest. You are looking at the 17 car on your screen there out of Dade City, Florida, a driver who missed his high school graduation to go to Magnolia and get rained out, unfortunately for him. It's a Durham-powered Longhorn for Brendan Smith. Comes in eighth in points. I believe he is fourth, third or fourth overall in the Aces Renovation Rookie of the Year, but that Williams Trucking 17 car of Brendan Smith from Dade City, Florida. Panama City Cycles adorns the side of the 10 car out of Panama City, Florida. It's Ryan Crane. Ryan Crane uh, was the only driver who didn't show up for his photo shoot there on the screen. That's why there's no photo there of Ryan Crane, but seventh in series points, and good to have Panama City Cycles on board as one of the series' newest series sponsors. In car 28, that is Henry Carter. Good to have Henry Carter. Second uh, visit with us here this year. We saw him at Swainsboro in the Cornette powered Barry Wright out of Kite, Georgia. Henry Carter. Josh Putnam in car number 212, third in series points out of Florence, Alabama. Picked up the win in Magno at Magnolia in the 212 car coming down in the front straightaway as he gets up to speed. As we're quick on the green flag here. Jeremy Pate in the 22, exiting off of turn number two, one of the series followers this year. Good to have Jeremy Pate back with us in car number 22. And out of Stark, Florida, the 01 is Jason Garver. Jason Garver in the 0-1. You're getting a good look there to Zippy's Autos. Randall Chup Consulting 212. That's a new wrap, or new wrap on the car for Florence, Alabama's Josh Putnam. There you see Jason Garver. The Orleans Mobile Home Transport Mac Industry 0-1 car. Can anybody from the fourth group move Joseph Joyner off the top of the charts? Trey getting a look at this racetrack, really starting to widen out. These guys are starting to use a couple of different lines, especially through turn one and two. Yeah, absolutely. As it breaks in, they'll uh, be able to just get up top out of turns uh, three and four and then just try to shoot underneath them down the front stretch. Gets really wide and get too wide on the front stretch, on the back stretch, really utilizing uh, getting that drive off the turns. Yeah, get a good look at uh, Ryan Crane, who looking down this list, Putnam is the fastest of the group, comes in fifth fastest overall again. Josh Putnam there in the 212. Again, the only series regular that has a win. Again, this is only our fourth, uh, what was supposed to be our uh, eighth race of the year, is now only our fourth race of the year. Uh, but uh, Josh Putnam there, fastest out of that group. And then the 22 of Jeremy Pate, exiting the racetrack. So that'll do it for Hunt the Front's uh, Super Dirt Series presented by Sweet Victory Apparel Company Super Late Models and Dirt Draft Hot Laps. The next time you see the Super Late Models on the racetrack tray, it'll be for the My Race Pass time trials to set our heat race lineups tray. It's bomber time on the racetrack. Absolutely, they're getting rolling out here. Out on the track in the 17L out of Glenwood, Georgia, that's Clarissa Ledford right here on the front stretch. All you young ladies looking for the female drivers, that's her right there in that black and green 17 machine. In the four machine out of Portal, Georgia, that's Tyler Davis. In the 1B out of Kathleen, that's Justin Brantley. In the 911 out of Metter, that's Jackson Monroe. In the 41, that green and white and purple, real sharp looking car, that's Paul Ledford out of Glenwood, Georgia. Right behind Paul is in the 79 machine out of Wrightsville, Georgia, that's Marshall Powell. And we got a local here. In the 99 machine, the black and green out of Cochran, that's Brian Jones. In the black and green, 22 out of Rinkin, Georgia, that's Michael Brown. 
We got a camo car. Might be hard to see him over there in the number eight. Out of Cochran, that's Tyler Giddens. And in that 12 machine pulling in the back pit area there out of Unadilla, it's Justin Bridges. And a 94 out of Dublin, that's Graham Stevenson. Right here with that white, black, and green machine on the front stretch. And the 97 out of Chauncey, Georgia, that's Freeman Birch. On your screen there, that's the eight of Tyler Giddens. Real sharp looking camo car out of Cochran. Well, fans, for the delay, we are uh, got a 21 out here missing. I think he's was entered in a wrong class. That's what we're waiting on here is to get that programmed in. Got the first group here for our last air electrical bombers, ready to do their hot lap qualifying. have 18 of our bombers here tonight. Fans, great time right now while we're settling in. Grab yourself something to eat, something to drink. Still got some fans rolling in here. There's not too many uh, spaces left in the stands. Quite a few uh, 
Places left here um, starting to fill up on our lawn chair area. Got a great crowd for this Hunt the Front event. Sportsmen, you should be at staging. 602 Sportsmen, you should be at staging. Modified the Chargers, start making your way. Modified the Chargers, start making your way to staging. Here we go, we're gonna pick it up. We're gonna do four laps of hot lap qualifying here for our bomber division. On the screen, there's that 97 of Freeman Birch. Coming around here for the first lap, that's Tyler Giddens. The 94 of Graham Stevenson, fast lap so far. Looks like we're having problems there for Tyler Giddens pulling off the track and that eight machine still going strong here. And hot lap qualifying, got Graham Stevenson with an 18.085 in the lead. Graham Stevenson, that 94 machine with an 18.085. Nope, looks like we have some trouble there when the 97 of Birch got straightened out. That treacherous turn number two sneaks up on these bombers as well. Well, the quickest time was the 94 of Graham Stevenson here in that first group. The 94 of Graham Stevenson with an 18.085, followed by the four of Tyler Davis, 18.174, second quick. Before he pulled out, Tyler Giddens with an 18.585. That's third quick. And 9.11 of Jackson Monroe, fourth quick, with an 18.750. Round out the top five, the 1B of Justin Brantley with an 18793. But Graham Stevenson in the 94, fast lap so far. I know Graham's been a local driver, wants to get that checkered flag. I know he's excited to put up a quick time so far, but we're going to roll out here with group number two. Let's see what some of these other drivers have to say. 18 of these drivers here this evening. Great turnout by our last air and electrical bombers. Rolling out with the Mickey Mouse on the side of the car. That's the 69 of Brian Casey. Out of Osceola, Georgia. Right behind him in the 68. That's Tim Jensen out of Bonaire. Rolling in that 22, the white, the white and blue machine. That's Michael Brown out of Rinkin. And in the 79, that's Marshall Powell out of Wrightsville, Georgia, the 79 machine. The 68 of Jensen moves up to third. He's 18.267. The 68 of Jensen, third quick. 69 of Casey, fourth quick, 18.552, 18.552. Oh, the 79 of Marshall Powell sneaks into the top four with an 18.396, 18.396, Marshall Powell.
Well, Michael Brown got quicker there on that last lap in the 22, coming six quick with an 18.517. Also the 69 of Brian Casey with an 18.448, making him fifth quick. The four, fourth place, the 79 of Marshall Powell with an 18.393. But still, your man to beat the 94 of Graham Stevenson with an 18.085. Your fast qualifier so far. Next, we'll roll out our last group of qualifiers here for our bomber division. Rolling down the track in the 12 machine. That's Justin Bridges out of Unadilla, Georgia. Myron Mixon powered machine. Right behind him is the 97 of Freeman Birch out of Chauncey, Georgia. In the 17L, the black and green machine out of Glenwood, Georgia, that's Clarissa Ledford. Right behind her is her relative number 41 out of Glenwood, Georgia, that's Paul Ledford. The DBJ Cuts Machine, the 99 black and green. That's Mr. Brian Jones here out of Cochran. Putting up a good lap, seventh quick. Brian Jones gets faster, 18.336, makes him fourth quick. Fourth quick for Brian Jones. The 387 of Jacob Howell out of Glenwood, Georgia as well. Rounding out the top 10 with an 18.707. Brian Jones from Cochran, your fastest of that group with an 18.336 fourth quick. In third, it's Tim Jensen with an 18.267. In second, it's the number four of Tyler Davis with an 18.174. But your fast qualifier out of Dublin, the number 94 of Graham Stevenson with an 18.085. Next up will be our Vidalia Motorsport 602 late, late model sportsmen's. Coming out for some hot lap qualifying. Modifieds, you should be at staging chargers and street stocks. Start getting ready. Chargers and street stocks. Start getting ready. Also, 18 of the 602 sportsmen here tonight. Great group of sportsmen throwing down here at the battlefield. Man, somebody just got here. Make sure you check in. Let them know that you're here watching the hunt the front at Cochran Motor Speedway. Check in on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Let your friends and family know what you're doing here in middle Georgia on a Saturday night. out on the track is the 86 out of Byron, Georgia. That's Wiley McDaniel. DMT Utilities, B&B Farms and Machine out of Byron, Georgia. Right behind him, 
is the three out of Vidalia, Georgia. The three of Philip Pittman. Got that sweet onion Vidalia blue machine. Coming into turn number one. In the 107 out of Gray, Georgia, that's Chaz Haskins. Chaz in that white, white and green 107 machine. Haskins Diesel, WRT Construction 107Z, Chad Haskins. Rolling over in turn number two. That's the 14 out of Ellaville, Georgia. That's Josh Taylor. Yep, behind Josh Taylor's the 38T out of Fort Valley, Georgia. That's Matthew Taylor. Looks like he's pulling down here on the inside. Going down to the inside also out of Dublin, the 13 of Landon Matthews. Here on the front stretch, number six out of Locust Grove, that's Colton Herbert. Nice looking car. Here on the front stretch, the 90 of Jesse James. Here on the back stretch, you got the double zero out of Macon. It's Brandon McDaniel. And right behind him in the 88 machine out of Colton, Georgia, it's Wynn Collins in that white, blue, and orange machine coming into turn three. Just behind the 88 in that sharp white and black machine out of the local Cochran, Georgia, number 31, that's Alec Vickers. We're spacing them out, getting the different groups ready to go here on the infield. We're trying to get Philip Pittman to go to the infield. The number three machine, not sure if he can't hear on the receiver, but we're trying to get the number three down in the infield so we can get this first hot lap qualifying session underway. Man, this is a great sight to see all these cars in the pits, both on the inside and up on the top, top side pit area. The, the stands are full. We appreciate you coming out to Cochran Motor Speedway. Can't ask a better way to spend the Saturday night. And I appreciate you uh, giving the time and come out here and enjoy some dirt late model racing as well as all these other supporting classes. We've got 102 cars here this evening. It's going to be a great event. It's already been fun. We've just been hot lapping. Sun flag man, he's gonna give him the green. Here we go. We're gonna go hot lap qualifying here for our 602 sportsman. Wow, the quick time so far, the 89 of Jason Howell, 15852. 15852 for Jason Howell. Very quick time. But the 14 of Josh Taylor says, I'm right behind you. 15886. 15886. The 89 and 14 are battling.
Taylor quicker yet, but still not quicker than Jason Howell, the 14 with a 15-8-7-0. Make him second quick. But the 89 of Jason Howell, the 15-8-3-6, your leader so far for our 602 sportsman. We got the double zero, Brandon McDowell in third with a 16-0-3-8. And the 49 of Wesley Robertson with a 16-3-5-9. Wesley out of Hawkinsville, Georgia, just down the road. So two drivers in the 15s as the 89 of Jason Howell and the 14 of Josh Taylor. Another group rolling out here on the track. I just bumped, bumped it down clear into the builder and then just went up on the... Uh... Coming at you first out of turn three, that's the 107 of Chaz Haskin out of Gray, Georgia. Just behind him, out of Cochran, that's the 94D. That's Baker Davis. Just behind Baker Davis, the 38T out of Fort Valley. That's Matthew Taylor. Just behind him coming in turn number one, the 13 out of Dublin, it's Landon Matthews. We've got the 53 out of East Dublin. That's Lance Griffith. And then the two out of Ellaville. That's Hadley Green, your group here for group number two. Baker Davis moves up in that top five with a 16.081, fifth quick. In the 94D machine, Chaz Haskins, the 107 machine, jumps up fourth quick, 16.015. Chaz Haskins, better lap with the 107, moves up into those 15s, 15.893. The 13 of Landon Matthews with a 15.950, fourth quick. Putting up some fast laps here in this second group. Landon Matthews with the 13 with a 15.873 moves up to third quick. The 38T of Matthew Taylor, fifth quick with a 15.983. But Baker Davis says, no, I got you beat with a 15.903. Matthew Taylor, six quick. 94D of Baker Davis on that last lap. Got his quickest lap there with a 15.903. In fourth, the 107, Chaz Haskins with a 15.893. And on his last lap, we have a new fastest qualifier. The 13 of Landon Matthews moves up with a 15.655. So now Josh Howell drops to second with a 15.836. Landon Matthews, quick qualifier so far. With the 13 machine. We'll roll out here our last group of qualifiers. And the 11 out of America's Georgia, that's Alan Stick. And the 86 out of Byron, Georgia, that's Wiley McDaniel. And the 18B out of Uly, Florida, that's Mark Flesher. In the 6 out of Locust Grove, Georgia, it's Colton Herbert. And the three out of Adelia, Georgia, it's Philip Pittman. Modified, you should be at staging. Chargers and street stocks start making your way. Chargers and street stocks start making your way to staging. Philip Pittman, 16.055, losing top 10.
The three of Philip Pittman moves up to second quick with a 15 7 6 7. Also, the six of Colton Herbert moves up fifth quick with a 15 8 8 2. Mark Fletcher in the 18 B, sixth quick with a 15 8 8 5. Well, on our second group there, the 13 of Landon Matthews still holds on to be our top qualifier with a 15-6-5-5. Followed by the last group there, the number three, Philip Pittman with a 15-6-7. Third quick, the 89 of Jason Howell, 14 of Josh Taylor in fourth. And fifth was Colton Herbert in the number six. Rolling on track next here is our modifieds. Got six modifieds here this evening. We'll qualify and see how they rack up here for our feature event. Chargers, you should be at staging street stocks. Start making your way. Crown Vicks, you can go ahead and start getting strapped in. Chargers and street stocks should be on your way to staging. Crown Vicks, start getting strapped in. Next up will be our open wheel modifieds. Sun's starting to set here. Temperature's starting to drop a little bit. It's coming nice and beautiful here in Cochrane at the Cochrane Motor Speedway. Got a nice, beautiful sunset overlooking a great crowd. Fans, as you use the concession stands, please make sure you uh, throw your trash away in the trash receptacles. We've got uh, quite a few cans around the facility, and we just appreciate if you could help us keep this motor park clean.
Well, out on the track now is our open wheel modifieds. Out of Twin City, Georgia, it's been a while. I think you said it's been over a year, year, two years. That's the 54 of Tommy Haddon coming out of turn number four. The 01 on your screen out of Grantville, South Carolina. That's Speedy Ballman. Did have one late entrance. Do have seven modifieds here. In the 39 machine, the black and white, that's out of Cochrane, Georgia, Carter Fair. Coming around turn number two in the zero out of Savannah, Georgia, that's Casey Lee. In the 13 machine out of Statesboro, Georgia, that's Robbie Moody. You got a car turned around in turn number two. Looks like that's the zero of Casey Lee. In the 24, coming around turn number four. Out of Bluffton, South Carolina, that's Patrick Balware. In the 27 machine, Driving that low Toyota at a Warner Robins car at a Cochran, Georgia. That's Jason Floyd. Quick so far in 17.374, that's Jason Floyd. Second quick, the 54 of Tommy Hatton. 27 of Floyd with a 17.374, 17.374. Carter Fair must have had a transponder issue with the 39, not picking up any times for the 39. But the quickest time, the 27 of Jason Floyd with a 17.374. Second quick, Tommy Haddon in the 54 with a 17.855. Top three, the zero of Casey Lee with an 18.044. Next up, we are 602 Sportsman Chargers. We have five Chargers here this evening. Rolling into turn number one in the 12C 
out of Moultrie, Georgia. That's Chase Giddens in that black and green 12C machine. Going on the back stretch. Out of Rinse, Georgia, that's the number nine of Trace Woodard. In the 27E machine out of Dublin, Georgia, that's Eric Baggett. Out of Macon, Georgia, that 38 machine, the blue and yellow. I believe he has a Superman on the top there. That's the 38 of Spencer Taylor out of Macon, Georgia. And last but not least, the black and white 31 machine out of Cochran, Georgia. That's Thomas Vickers. With our first lap so far, the 16681 from our 38 of Spencer Taylor. First quick. But the nine of Trace Woodard says no. The 16307 moves into that first spot. Red flag comes out, turn number one. Turn number one. Got a car that went straight and just hit the pole hard over there in turn number one. Driver gave the okay. He is all right. Everybody give him a hand. Took a hard lick. Car just went straight out of turn one. Something must have broke over there. Couldn't get it to steer around. Hate to see that happen in hot laps. But the driver's out. That's the best thing here. Going to hook up with the wrecker and get this, uh, get his car back to the pit area. Not sure if he'll be able to make it back for the feature or not. Not sure how severe contact that made there. Well, the driver's all right there. That's the 27E of Eric Baggett. Glad to see he's all right, but look at the front end there. That's definitely going to probably end his night. Appreciate him coming out, but just a bad situation here to happen on hot laps, but glad he's all right. Like I said, car just went straight and went over the hill and into the pole. As you can see here, the drone view here of Cochrane Motor Speedway. Sun's starting to settle. Get the car here, move back to the pit area. We'll continue our hot lap sessions here. Got three more classes, street stocks, 
Pro Crown Vicks and Junior Crown Vicks. Then we'll be back to the Hunt the Front and Late Models for some qualifying. We're back here rolling around the track, getting ready to go green. Get these drivers a few more hot laps qualifying under their belt. The 27E out, he was fourth quick with a 17.459. Leaves us with four cars. Definitely quite a bit of damage. They'd have to do some quick work and pull off a miracle. You never know. If some hands get put together. People got some different parts available. You never know if they're able to get that back together, but it definitely took a hard lick. Not looking the best there for Eric Baggett. Got a caution out here. The 31 of Vickers. Thomas Vickers went over the berm as well. You can see there on the video. He went over and rolled on back i don't know if he needs a push or i think that might be all he needs is just a push to get back up over that hill we got the four-wheeler over there in turn two trying to get thomas vickers back on the track Trying to climb that steep, steep incline over there. Once you get back by the fence, it gets pretty steep. You stay just off the track, it's pretty flat, but once you get past about 10 foot, it starts to drop off. Looks like they about have it. Truck's gonna give him a running, ask him what he wants to do here. Also, on a caution here, trying to get the 31 of Thomas Vickers out behind.